And for that, you don't need to go and ask things like that. Of course, if you have your guru, you can ask your guru di directly if it is right or not. But if the guru said, no, it is not like that, forget about this. But if the guru said, yes, it is like that, but keep it silently inside of you, meditate on it, then always listen to the messages you receive. It's not that I don't talk for people, I do. It's not that I don't give messages to people, I do. But individually. What you receive in dreams, meditate on it. Don't just take it directly, what you, receive, what you see. Meditate on it. Go deeper into the meaning of things. When you go deeper, it will also open up your heart. At that moment, your heart will rejoice. For some messages are directly clear. You know, add the dream or trade it, directly you receive it. And also, that kind of dream, the moment you wake up in the morning, you feel it strongly inside of you. There's no doubt. But if you have doubt, meditate on it. And go deeper, then the meaning is hidden. Then, when you do this, the real meaning, the message will be revealed for you. And this is the link between a master and a disciple. There's no in-between person. There's no intermediate person. So, like that, try not to listen to people always, you know. When you receive something, treasure it. You see, tomorrow if you find a treasure, for example, you're going for a walk in the forest, okay? In spring in itself, and then your feet just knock a chest. And you open it, and you see full of gold and diamonds. Would you publicize it? <laughs> that means, you will? <laughs> ah, you will not publicize it. <laughs> you will try to keep it as secret as possible. <laughs> so the connection between the master and the disciple is how to be treasured. And it's one to one. No intermediate. So try to remember that always, you know. Whether the master is in the physical body or the master is in the astral world, but they will come directly to you. They will not go from X, Y, Z. So, with that I want to wish you a happy new year, 2012. Actually, 2012, heavy year coming. <laughs> so some people think it's the end of the world. And I always say, be careful, because if you think it's the end of the world, it could be your end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some people think that 2012 there will be a, sh a shift in the consciousness of man. Of course, the shift of consciousness is happening every day. Every day, your consciousness is changing. And you who is on the spiritual path, your consciousness is moving towards the divine. And people which is in the outside, their consciousness dwell in the outside. So there is always a shift. You see, next year, one has to pray a lot. Because of this kind of thinking, it generates lots of negativity. And generating negativity from the mind don't contribute. So, what you have to do is do now as matter now. Wherever you are, chant the name of God and be positive. 
Like that, you can change also the surrounding where you are. You can vibrate positivity. You can vibrate love. So that people don't go crazy. <laughs> and then, don't think that because uh, I'm not talking about 2012, you know, people say don't think that, you know, I've heard some Swamiji's giving darshan every day because I think 2012 already. <laughs> 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 That's what they say, you know. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. It's just because, you see, by what you receive during darshan will help you to be positive, help you to be strong. Even if you see the around world is changing into very negativity, negativeness, you know, but you will still be centered within you. So, do your japam every day. How many of you do japam every day? Not too much, huh? How many of you eat every day? <laughs> The hand is not that high. You can show the world also how it is to the hand. So you see, not everybody is eating every day. Look, <laughs> no hands are. So everybody is fasting. Alright? Like you, and everybody is just <laughs> not eating. So food is good, you know. I'm sure you all eat, even if you have not lift your hand. <laughs> Except someone. Um, so you have to do your job also every day. Not for me. You know, you do your job for yourself, you know. It's not about pleasing me. You will please the divine and you will reach him. If you think that I'm forcing you to do japa because it pleases me, you can forget about that. You know. <laughs> it will be for you, your own good. You see, all that have been said, you know, throughout centuries, you know, through, from the beginning of creation itself, the Divine has manifested Himself so many times. Do you think for His own benefit He manifests Himself? No, the divine is free, but he manifests himself because of his love, the love that he has for his creation, the love that he has for his children, his people, you know, the love that he has infused inside of everybody. He manifests himself so that you can be raised to him. And this is the greatness of humility. You, know, you saw a few days ago, we celebrated Christmas, you know, where you see Christ being born. He could have been born in a big palace. And he's God, you know, sent directly from God. He could have been born in a big castle, you know, with hundreds of servants. But not. He chose to be born in a manger. Even that nobody wanted to give him any place to live, you know. And this is the humility that God showed to mankind. Because only through this humility that one will raise to the Divine, you know. Same thing with Krishna. Krishna was a great, uh, he's a Param Avatar himself, you know, when he was born, in a prison. 
And even that, you have to run away, you know, to Yeshua's place, you know, to the gown, you know. Why? To portray that humility, you know, it's only through humility that one will be reaching the divine. Not by pride, not by the has it being uh, arrogant and uh, let's say being uh, huh? proud. Yeah, with the ego, you know. So it's like that. Keep reminding yourself, you know, all the other power, all the saints, they have just come to teach one to be humble. And to be humble does not mean you have to take a whip and whip yourself and say you're humble. No, the humility of the heart, that one has to be humble. And when the humility of the heart means that the mind is not focused always on the outside, but also focused on the inside. So don't let yourself be influenced by what is happening outside. You don't let yourself be influenced what uh, XYZ is telling you. But learn to feel, learn to listen to yourself here. God is here, you know, and He's always talking to you. So it's about time now to listen. It's about time to calm the spine. It's about time to awake the deepness of love. It's about time to become an instrument. And this is the wonderful thing about this time, which uh, we are living now, you know. Not this time 2012 or this stuff, no. But this time itself, you know. So, open up. Open up your heart without fear. Give freely from your heart because your heart is an imperishable source of love. The more you give, more will come, more will flow. You have seen from the source a river how it is. The source is always small now. But at the end, how big is the river? Huge. Because the river is always flowing. And on the way when it's flowing, many rivers are joining together. So, it is the same way. When you are flowing, when you are opening your heart and flow, like that, many rivers will also join in and will flow. So that's big. The little river that you started will become a big torrent at the end. And knows one thing, people will all remember you for that, you know, for the love that you give. <coughs> Nothing else. Because if you give something to somebody, then I give you this towel. Tomorrow the towel will fall to dust and finish, no? But love is always remembered. For example, somebody hurt you. Or if you love someone and the person hurt you, do you forget about that person? No, you never forget about that person. You always remember that person. Because before the hurt, the love was there. That's what love do. Love always connect. But you should not have fear to open the heart, you know. Don't think that you will get hurt. When you give love, you will never get hurt. But if you think with the mind, then you will get hurt. If you develop fear, then you will get hurt. So that's why I said, let the mind be on the divine, let the mind be on God. You open the heart and let love flow for you. 
Tamam. Güzel